Good day, scholars. If future Gohan had taken future Trunks into the hyperbolic time chamber, or room of spirit and time, would they have had the power to change the future and defeat the androids together, and also defeat Imperfect Cell? Let's go through the possible ridiculous reasons why this never happened in the first place. Gohan wouldn't have had any knowledge of the time chamber because there would have been no one there to tell him except Mr. Popo, Corin and Yajirobe, maybe. There are so many loopholes in the future timeline that it makes my head hurt, and we could spend about an hour with these what ifs, and why this didn't happen or why that didn't happen. I made a video a while back why Goku couldn't and didn't intervene in the future timeline. You should check that out, and I'll leave a link below. So to keep this what if on a steady path, and in order for the time chamber idea to make sense, I need to create a foundation of backstory for future Gohan to justify why the time chamber was used at a much later date date and not before. And it's to set the theme and circumstances of this what if. Let's assume Gohan was already made aware of the time chamber by Mr. Popo many many years ago before Gohan became a full adult. Unless Mr. Popo was dead, but then my own headcanon is telling me that the androids would have never found the lookout. And that's how I'll play it, but you may think different. After a few years of destruction, and all of the warriors dying out, Mr. Popo realizes Gohan was the only fighter left, and he would suggest the time chamber to Gohan. Let's assume Gohan was a little older before Mr. Popo confronted him and gave him this idea. He could already be a Super Saiyan due to the pain of loss. If you remember in the History of Trunks movie, he mentioned the thought of Piccolo and Krillin dying, and maybe that was the trigger. But at this point, it doesn't matter if he was or not. I believe Gohan would attempt to use the time chamber anyway, if there was a shot of winning. Now being in there alone by himself with no real training background except with Piccolo in the preparation for the Saiyans, Gohan would struggle. He's a young boy in a room filled with nothing except his own worries, pain and pressure. Gohan would not even last a month, similar to Goku as a kid, just through mental struggles alone. Let's be honest, everyone was gone except just a few. His motivation and determination must have taken a heavy hit. No Piccolo or Goku to push him in training either. It was all about survival and his own drive to keep going. Which, let's be honest, a person can burn themselves out by thinking that way every day. And Gohan was a very kind-hearted boy who didn't like fighting at all. He would leave the time chamber and decide to stay at home, and would train passively and build on what little training he had with Piccolo as a kid. I always believe Gohan would have experienced some training from Mr. Popo to give him some more training foundations, similar to Goku as a kid, and I think future Gohan training with Mr. Popo would be a perfect addition to his story and explain how future Gohan became so strong and could train on his own afterwards. He would grow up to be a strong Super Saiyan warrior, but as I said in a previous video, there were roadblocks why future Gohan's power was capped. That is the foundation to this what if. This would lead to the beginning of the History of Trunks movie, and we're set to go. Trunks finally entered Gohan's radar because he wanted a train. Trunks had enough of the suffering. It would be at this moment all future training would stem from. I don't believe Gohan ever wanted to force Trunks into fighting before that moment. He knew how it felt. This was Trunks' choice. He takes Trunks to the beach and begins the training. He sees the potential in Trunks. The training would continue as normal because Gohan was just starting the training with Trunks. He wanted to see what he could do. The events would continue as normal. Gohan and Trunks would still carry on with that fight against the androids and Gohan would lose his arm. The story continues and Gohan continues to train Trunks and explains the Super Saiyan form trigger right before the androids attack the next time. But this is where it all changes in this what if. Instead of Gohan being led by rage and determination to fight them alone, he realizes the truth that he is still not strong enough for both of them. He tells Trunks that this is a fight they cannot win and that the years have passed him by where he's done nothing but struggle and be on the back foot. But now it was time to change the whole game. He doesn't knock out Trunks. He tells him that he feels he's ready to undertake the training with him, because together it's possible. He explains to Trunks that he couldn't do it alone. He couldn't endure it as a kid, but didn't want to waste that time either because he can only have two years maximum. Gohan's secret plan for years was to wait for Trunks to step up and want to become a warrior, and that is why Gohan did not want to waste the time chamber usage. He wanted a partner, another hybrid, the son of Vegeta, to train with him. He knew he could benefit from it with another warrior in the time chamber better than being alone for two years. Let's be honest, Gohan had trained his way in the real world for 15 years, and he's still less powerful than both androids. He thought another two years in the time chamber alone wouldn't have mattered in the grand scale of things. But in this time of crisis, 
two years with another Saiyan willing to train would make the difference in their growth. He takes Trunks back home and explains the circumstances to Bulma. She fits them both up with brand new Saiyan armor and they both take off on their journey to the lookout as the androids still attack the cities. Gohan warns Trunks that this isn't a vacation and that he wants Trunks to leave the chamber stronger than himself to which Trunks is shocked and thinks that's not possible but Gohan smiles and encourages him. It would keep Trunks determined to bring out his best. As they both enter the chamber, Trunks feels the pressure inside and Gohan begins to feel the same pain he felt many years ago being in there, but now his body felt more accustomed to it from all the fighting. He aims to spend just under two years in the room of spirit and time and aims to get Trunks to achieve Super Saiyan and overcome his limits. This would be a great time for the sons of Goku and Vegeta to bond and for Gohan to tell more stories about their parents and friends. It would take nearly two months before Gohan found the right trigger to get Trunks to transform. Gohan played with a rage inside Trunks and lied to him, saying that before they entered the time chamber, the androids were on their way to the city to kill Bulma. Trunks believed that to be true, but it was the only way Gohan could trigger a circumstance and get a trigger powerful enough to make Trunks transform, to make him snap. And so it did. The anger burned and he attacked Gohan with all his might, thinking he lied to him and let his mother die. But this trick made Gohan smile. And so he transformed into a Super Saiyan 2 and fought off Trunks' assault. Gohan became serious because Trunks' burning rage was actually getting a little out of control. He turned it up a notch and knocked Trunks out cold. When Trunks came through, Gohan reassured him that his mother was alright and that it was all part of the training, but it was fine. Trunks felt that emotion. He felt the pain of the androids killing his mother. That was the trigger for his Super Saiyan power to never let it happen, and Trunks would never forget that feeling. But now the real training would begin. They both knew the time chamber was a stressful environment. Their body felt so much pain daily, but Gohan realized the importance of basic combat training to which he focused on in the beginning. They did this without relying on Super Saiyan as much, but when Super Saiyan was used, it would be to test their abilities at the end of each day. Throughout the training, Gohan was beginning to realize that Trunks' potential was more than he could have imagined, but also realized that his own power had been rising so much as well because he had been training with another person with Saiyan potential. This was the type of training Gohan had been missing all his life. The advantage of sparring with someone powerful, the advantage of bouncing off each other and helping each other and keeping the motivation high. Instead, for 15 years outside, all Gohan had was rubbish, half-assed training sessions down at the beach by himself, where he took no advantage of his Saiyan potential to the max. Towards the end of the first year, Gohan and Trunks had grown an incredible amount and had become very accustomed to their Super Saiyan power. But Gohan and even Trunks realized something, that their Super Saiyan power was bubbling to push past what they could do. And so both of them discussed the feeling and aimed to go even higher, until eventually future Gohan and future Trunks were able to ascend to the next level, Super Saiyan Grade 2. They both felt the incredible power within and trial and tested it for a few weeks. But it took so much of a toll on their body that they realized it may be a bad idea against androids with infinite energy. Gohan and Trunks played it smart. They didn't know the full potential of the androids at this point, but one thing was for certain. They cannot risk being tired when fighting them. Trunks' mentality was slightly different from how he was in Z, because in these events, Gohan is not dead. Trunks thinks a little differently now, and sees Gohan as his master and tries to impress him whenever he can, thinking more outside the box. Trunks came up with the idea to master their regular Super Saiyan power and not waste their energy to which Gohan was impressed and thought of a way to do it. Gohan tried to remember the importance of his mind training with Krillin and how Piccolo would meditate and realize that mind is just as important as body. He decided to maintain the Super Saiyan form as long as possible, to master it, control the emotion, keep focused, but of course, this was harder than it initially appeared to be, for they both had always used the Super Saiyan power in bursts of rage ready for combat, and they had done that for so long, but to maintain it on a daily basis was something else completely. They had to change the whole game. They tried it, and for just over a month, they were able to sustain Super Saiyan for most of that time, but there was a problem. Both had spent a little over a year inside and both were becoming mentally exhausted. This was a long time away, the first time for both of them to be in a place like this for so long. Gohan felt that Trunks had grown stronger and maybe, just maybe, they could win this if they were attacked. His idea was to go back outside, see Bulma, recharge, and in time they can complete their training. As they left the time chamber, they were relieved to feel the fresh air. Gohan told Trunks to turn off his Super Saiyan form and just relax. They had not quite mastered Super Saiyan, 
and it was still a bit of a struggle daily, but they were doing well considering. As they flew off to see Bulma, they both enjoyed the greatest of meals. They were both supercharged. Bulma could see Trunks and Gohan had changed. Their hair was much longer. Bulma offered to give them both a haircut, to which Gohan refused and said he thinks he's going to sport the look of Yamcha for a while. Bulma laughed and said the scars do make him look similar. Trunks said he'll do the same. He's kind of digging the long purple locks right now. Both of them would rest until the next day where they could aim to recap on all their training. Breaking news, the androids have approached West City. For some reason, the events have changed slightly because future Gohan didn't confront the androids and die. Both had managed to rest up this time, but there was no time to retreat. If they didn't stand up now, then everything else will be killed off, even Bulma. Gohan reassures Trunks that this is what they've been training for, and that the plan is to split them up. That will be the only way they can win this. The androids were weaker when separated. Trunks and Gohan get into some new fresh Saiyan armor made by Bulma. This was the big fight. And so, with blasts going off left, right and center, the androids look to the side to see Gohan and Trunks land before them. They laugh and tell them how they love the matching blue outfits. It reminds them of how pitiful Vegeta looked before he died. That comment pissed off Trunks to the nth degree. And without an attack plan, Trunks fires up to Super Saiyan and charges at a ridiculous speed, clobbering Android 17 to the mountains nearby. Android 18 looks as Trunks chases Android 17, but she hears a voice next to her saying, Don't you dare take your eyes off your Reaper. It was Gohan standing beside her as a Super Saiyan, and as she turns her head, he strikes her jaw with a monstrous elbow hook where she eats dirt. Gohan puts his foot on the back of her head, which is laying in the dirt and he presses her head into the ground and says, this time you're the prey. Her arm tries to get motion to blast at Gohan, but he foresees it and stamps on her arm. With his one foot on her head and his other foot on her wrist, he grabs at her elbow joint and pulls upwards, where he viciously rips off the entire arm of Android 18 and holds it above his head. She screams in pain. Meanwhile, Trunks was chasing Android 17 in the mountains, where Android 17 was shocked at Trunks' progression. 17 was on the run, and Trunks was following in a rage. The dominating, more powerful Super Saiyan Gohan sits on top of the screaming Android 18, and with both having one arm each, the field was even. Gohan would punch, 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 and smash, smash, smash right into Android 18's face, and he would not stop. Her screams would echo the city, and with each explosive punch cracking into her skull, the screams would get quieter and would become more gargling until her battered face symbolized her inevitable death. Gohan's rage from the past 15 years had all been put into the barrage of punches. The rage was in his eyes. You could see how much anger was inside waiting to come out at this moment. And this was when he murdered Android 18 in cold blood. The final punch, the crash through her face into the dirt behind her head. Fatality. His power inside the room of spirit and time didn't allow him to master Super Saiyan, but the stress of the time chamber alone for one year pushed his physical might to new levels that he could endure daily. And it was that raw power alone that helped him destroy Android 18 thanks to being able to train with another strong Super Saiyan for nearly a year. Gohan came back to his senses and he realized she was finished. She was lifeless. He destroys the remains of the body and he looks aside. He realizes Trunks' power was rising too. He wasn't worried for Trunks' safety anymore. He knew he could hold his own. The weaker Android 17 was in for a challenge, but future Gohan was above all of them now. All that potential was finally unlocked after all these years thanks to efficient training and hope. A new determination to win thanks to Trunks being there with him. Gohan's spirit had been revitalized and could see the light at the end of the tunnel. The sons of the great Saiyan warriors were going to be this timeline's saviors. Just when it looked like 17 versus Trunks could be as awesome as Piccolo versus 17 in the original story, future Gohan dashes up behind 17 midst battle and puts him in a one arm full Nelson. Call it a half Nelson. But he locked his leg around the other side of him and had his arm up against his throat to secure a hold. Gohan went up high and seismic tossed 17 struggling body to the ground. He wasn't playing games. He came to end this now. Gohan spits onto 17. 17's fallen body. Now you know what it feels like to be ganged upon, you scum. Trunks tells Gohan to move and launches a ferocious giant energy ball into 17's body. A huge explosion occurs, but when the dust settles, 17 was there with his energy barrier hanging on by a thread, to which Gohan was behind this barrier and 17 couldn't sense him. And in respect of his fallen mentor Piccolo, the one-handed special beam cannon is fired at 17's barrier, 
The beam penetrates Seventeen's barrier and tears a hole right through Seventeen. It was hopeless for him. But finally, the bastard falls to his knees. Trunks ignites his aura, dashes down, stands above the fallen Seventeen, grabs his head and snaps his neck. Seventeen falls limp and Trunks jumps up, sends a finishing blast to the body. It was done. Gohan and Trunks looked at each other, realizing how incredible they've worked together. Realizing what they have just done, it was unthinkable. They give a powerful handshake to each other, just like an ending of a great 80s movie. They had just saved the future, for now. But there is still so much more to tell. That is a story for another day. In essence, one change of decision by Gohan to not fight the androids alone, and deciding to train with Trunks in the time chamber, made all the difference. Just the one year of physical stress on their body gave them the raw power boost enough to bring down the likes of the androids. But like Goku said, being in the time chamber is torture. You'll only get so far while you're in there. Training efficiently is much more important than physical body stress. If you want to play an exciting fan-made 2D adventure game based on Dragon Ball for free, then check out Return of the Saiyans. You can explore different worlds, train your different skills and unique transformation systems. In-game there are different classes and characters to play, Goku, Vegeta, Dende, Piccolo, Boo, Gohan, Trunks and now, after running a new update on a new server, Bulma has joined. The game is supported and updated a lot, and the new server world is starting on December 15th. There will be lots of Dragon Ball fans playing, so if you want to give this a try for free, use my promo code to get a free 3-day premium account over at SaiyansReturn.com. Many years passed since the androids were defeated. It is now the year 788. Gohan and Trunks begin rebuilding the planet with the people of Earth right after they took down the androids. Trunks and Bulma did not decide on returning to the past to alter history because right now, the future looks like it can grow once again. Therefore, the time travel development was suspended indefinitely as there was no urgency. During this time, Gohan, Trunks and Bulma had journeyed to New Namek in hope of restoring whatever they could. They would meet the Namekians and realize they had three wishes. But the new elder, Mori, had warned Gohan, Trunks and Bulma that this can only happen once. They are only allowed to use these Dragon Balls one time only for such a favor, as the negative energy will gradually increase with each wish, and universal destruction draws nearer with each wish, which is the reason why the Namekians were so careful going ballistic with the wishes in the first place. They allowed this one time use for their old friends of Earth. The wishes that Purunga were able to grant was restoring the damage to the cities on Earth, and then to restore all those who were killed by the androids ever since that horrible day. Of course, Mori's Purunga was far stronger than the one previous. There was no longer a small time limit for all those who had died. However, there was a time limit, and that was 10 years. Anything over 10 years ago could not be brought back, and that meant everyone who died in age 767 could not be brought back as it was over 20 years. So only a majority of city populations were brought back from up to the two years before Gohan and Trunks went into the time chamber. The final wish? Gohan and Trunks didn't know what to wish for exactly, but they didn't want to waste it either. They were thinking on their feet, but then they saw Dende, who had grown up to be a fine Namekian of wisdom. He remembered Gohan and Bulma from years ago. It had been such a long time, but he saw that Gohan had lost his one arm. This saddened Dende because although he had strong healing potential to heal wounds of others, it seemed that Gohan's loss of that limb for such a long time was too much to be restored from Dende's healing due to how it had already been healed up naturally and adapted to be part of Gohan's being. It was too late. Therefore, Dende suggested using the third wish to restore Gohan's arm. And so the kind-hearted idea brought back Gohan's arm. Earth's damage was restored and some of the population were brought back and so they journeyed back to Earth. But of course, with the addition of Dende, who had been appointed as Earth's new guardian by Mori. Earth was lacking in that department ever since Piccolo's death. Earth was in a very good standing at this point. In terms of their training, both Trunks and Gohan did not focus on it too much, and if anything, both had gotten somewhat out of shape in those eight years. Not drastically, but they were not near the power they once had. Gohan was always forced into war. The same with Trunks and with the initial thought of the androids being eliminated, both took the time to relax and not overdo it. Unfortunately for them, letting their guard down even for a split second was a mistake, for the advanced biological android cell had been awoken around the time of 786, which had slowly grown, and by age 788, it had become the imperfect cell we all came to know. His mission was as expected, to find and absorb the androids. It was during this time that Dende as Guardian of Earth was beginning to realize a strange presence on Earth, a presence getting stronger and stronger each day, and a complete annihilation of the people of South City. He thought it had to be connected. He was familiar with Piccolo and Nail's energy years ago and never forgot it. 
and he began to sense this energy from the lookout. He requested Mr. Popo to find Gohan to inform him of this. Gohan went to the lookout and Dende told him he sensed Piccolo, but Gohan was very confused. This is all completely wrong. Piccolo had been dead for over 20 years. Dende was adamant that it's the same energy. When he channeled his thoughts and feelings into Gohan, Gohan too sensed this energy and was completely in shock. Of course, Cell was created with Piccolo's cells and this left a trail of the Namekian's energy in the air along with some other titanic energy levels which Gohan absolutely recognized to be Freezer's. And not only that, his father's. It was time to find out what was going on. With Gohan completely recharged with a new arm, fallen a little bit short of the power he once was, he rushed to the outskirts of South City, where this terrible power was prowling. He lands on some grassy high ground and sees a green, sprinting insect-like creature. This hideous creature locks his eyes on Gohan and jumps up high, landing on another high ground grass area. The two steer each other down, with Cell looking emotionless, but creepy as hell. And Gohan's face is in shock. He realizes the power of this creature, it was filled with a feeling of so many others that he knew, and he knew it was stronger than the androids he fought eight years ago. And to be honest, if Gohan kept up his training eight years ago, he may have been able to triumph over this new power easily, but due to the times of peace, eight years of it, this could be trouble. Cell says, So, Gohan, you found me. I guess there's something about me that you recognize. Don't you want a closer look inside me? Actually, I'm quite full at this moment. Maybe another time. Gohan powers up to Super Saiyan. He didn't have what it took to even become a mastered Super Saiyan anymore, and wasn't sure he could even maintain the bulkier ascended form either. He had to pace himself well here. He knew this was going to be tough, and knew this was the beast responsible for the deaths at South City. I know it was you who killed those innocents. You'll pay for that. The dark times have gone, and you're going too. Cell replies, Oh my quite feisty, aren't you? Trying to end me quickly without any sort of builder. Bang! In a vicious blinding flash of light, the Super Saiyan charges at Cell with insane speed and punches the beast off guard, full force in the face. He didn't even give time Cell to finish his sentence. Cell crashes into the rocks and Gohan flies up high and shouts, I don't care what your name is, the only thing I'm calling you is dead. Gohan continues to power up even more and unleashes a fury of explosive blasts to Cell's body. Cell looks up in shock at this frightening power. It's an extremely strong Super Saiyan, and if he's not careful, it might kill him. Cell begins to move around fast to get out of the way. He's a very cunning creature. Gohan sees him scurrying and chases him down. Despite being out of shape somewhat, his power and drive really help him level the playing field to some degree. But Cell was only just getting used to his power. Deep down, he has somewhat of an edge, and an arsenal of techniques that can cause serious harm to Gohan. Gohan continues to chase Cell, and suddenly, Cell changes from the prey to the predator. He turns back around, and instantly headbutt charges Gohan straight on. Gohan gets slammed in the face full force, but tries to get his bearings back in the air. He's a little concussed, and Cell is already on top and wraps his tail around Gohan's neck. This is bad. Gohan is trapped. Cell is just out of Gohan's reach and he tries to punch, kick, bite the tail, but Cell's endurance is making him hold on. Gohan begins losing air and strength, and slowly the Super Saiyan powers fade. Cell says, Good. It's almost done. Soon you'll be part of me. A little snack before I find the androids and become complete. Gohan hears this just as he suddenly falls unconscious. He begins to just hang there. Ah, perfect. He slams Gohan onto the floor and lifts his tail up in the position to absorb Gohan from the rear. Wonderful. Let's feast. Cell's face is completely aroused. But then out of nowhere, an enormous thump to the spine of Cell. Cell's face goes from excited to terrified in a split second. And he crashes into the dirt just up ahead. It is Trunks. After sensing a horrible presence in the air, as well as the power of his mentor Gohan firing up, Trunks made his way to the battlefield to find out what the hell happened. Trunks can see Gohan is KO'd, but he should be okay soon enough. But Trunks needs to hurry, or Gohan might not make it. There are no Senzu beans left because Korin had died, so no quick heals there. And Dende is the only lifeline for any dangerous circumstance at this time. Trunks knows this, but fires up to Super Saiyan. You hurt Gohan! For that, I'm going to hurt you! Cell is getting up slowly off the floor, a little phased after that thunderous kick, and Trunks begins powering up, 
roaring. What an incredible level of power. But now, it's going even higher than expected. Rising up stronger than Gohan's just was. How is he doing this? Was this his hidden potential finally surfacing? Either way, Trunks managed to ascend to the next level. His muscles bulked out, and he went to the first ascended level, where he still retained his speed. Eight years ago, he could handle this form easy. He could not access the Master Super Saiyan, but he damn well could ascend his power beyond that of a Super Saiyan. Trunks knew it was a huge gamble, but he pulled it off. But how long could he last with this rusty level of power? That was the real question here. We didn't know the depths of Cell's power. Cell stands up and looks at the powered up Trunks. He is completely calm. What is going through his mind? I see you've exceeded me, Trunks. At least in the areas of brute strength. And yet, you have absolutely no chance of defeating me. <laughs> Can Trunks stop Cell and get Gohan to a safe place? And if Trunks fails here, who else could stop the biological android Cell? Find out in part 3, next time on Dragon Ball Z. Trunks, without a second thought, charges at Cell, the evil being he knows nothing about, and lands a variety of hits causing Cell to get severely damaged. Despite Trunks appearing to have an incredibly upper hand in terms of attack and speed, Cell's endurance could never be underestimated. Trunks was not as strong as he was in the original timeline when he returned against 17 and 18. Not anymore due to the times of peace. His level of power was now less than it was when he first came out of the time chamber with Vegeta in the original timeline. Strong enough to ascend, but not strong enough or conditioned in any way to maintain it, which meant problems for the young Super Saiyan here. Cell was beaten to a pulp though, and sank crashing down to the rocks once again. Finally, Trunks mustered up the stamina to form a giant energy blast, sending it straight down towards Cell for the finish. The blast hits him directly, and Cell was completely wasted on the floor, most of his body parts separated. Trunks hit an awesome attack, but Cell's anatomy was not vaporized yet. Trunks began feeling the effects of fighting for a few minutes intensely like that, using the ascended power, in a body not conditioned for it anymore, and slowly the Super Saiyan regressed his power to its grade 1 self, unable to maintain the bulkier form. Trunks was trying to catch his breath. That intense assault on Cell was the same as an untrained human trying to sprint a mile the moment they got out of bed in the morning. It was not wise. But once he did regain his breath, he went down after a few minutes to examine Cell's corpse. Something was not right. Trunks felt it in his guts, he felt something was present. And he was right, for the upper body of Cell still had its two arms attached, and out of nowhere, the disgusting insect poked his head out from the rubble like a whack-a-mole and shouts, SOLAR FLARE! Yes! Trunks gets blinded by the sneak attack and doesn't know what the hell happened. Cell, having the regeneration of Piccolo, began forming new limbs and healing his body, but at a great cost of his stamina. Cell in his first form was still tenacious, but nowhere near like his perfect form. The cost of regeneration at this level would make him vulnerable in terms of power once whole. However, Trunks was just as vulnerable after suffering a stamina hit from the assault, making this fight look like it would come down to the last punch. Cell would laugh and brag that Trunks is weakening, trying to not let it show that he too is suffering in a critical state. It was Cell's intelligence and the cells of Vegeta to bluff the enemy. But as Trunks came through with his eyesight, he could see the creature standing before him, not yet attacking. Trunks would then begin to laugh. I don't know who you are, or where you came from, but I can sense you clear as day. You're not like the androids, you're getting weaker. So wipe that stupid smile off your face, or I'll do it for you! Ah, well then, Trunks. It's time to show your hand. I can see you know who we are. But I'm not going to even bother asking about your background story. You drew first blood here, so you're not getting any senzu bean or going to prison. I'm going to send you straight to hell! Ah, feisty personality coming from someone who... BANG! Elbow to the face. Shut up, you creep! Trunks had enough of the chat show. The Super Saiyan was going for broke to end this beast. With every bit of power he had left, Cell would fight back and hit hard. But it was plain obvious that these two were fading at the same rate. It would literally come down to technique in the end, but who had the most experience? Surely it would favor Cell, who had years of battle knowledge in his DNA, and that's how it went. Towards the end, as close as it was, Cell delivered the last punch to knock Trunks to the ground. He fell out of his Super Saiyan form. Somehow, with all of Cell's energy and endurance left over, the bug stayed alive, like a cockroach in a nuclear explosion. 
The Saiyan hit the ground, and Cell needed to revitalize now. Finally, you caused me a lot of trouble, and you almost had me. But even within an inch of my life, I can still absorb you, and enjoy this Super Saiyan buffet. <laughs> Ha-me-ha-me-ha! Cell looks behind him in complete shock, and by the heavens, one fully loaded Kamehameha wave blinds the villain and hits him directly in the core. And in Cell's weakened state, my goodness, he was weakened, so defensiveless that the energy beam completely decimated his limbs once again. The veteran had arrived, the turtle hermit himself, Master Roshi. He was alive all this time. My days living in the submarine are over. Once I learned the androids were defeated, I made a vow to never live in fear again. So for the last few years, I trained myself even harder for a day like this when some tyrant asshole tries to destroy the world. I'm not afraid anymore. Cell was in half once again like a broken T-800 crawling towards Sarah Connor. You, I know you from the memories of the ones in my cells. There's no way you could... Just because I'm not a Super Saiyan, that I'd be no threat? You should know it's not all about power levels. You live a tunnel vision life. And that's fitting for what's next. Just look towards the light at the end of this tunnel. Kabi Habi! Master Roshi's body increases in muscle mass. He is friggin' jacked and stronger than ever. It's going to happen. Cell screams in pain with what little energy his voice cords mustered. Wait! I still function! Ha! And the Great Turtle Hermit Wave completely disintegrates the infection that was Cell. And in that moment, the Great Master had redeemed his absence in the fight against the androids years ago. Master Roshi had sensed a great danger years later in the form of Cell, and from the shadows had always kept an eye on the planet and the other warriors in case one day they needed his help, which was now. The intense training may not have allowed him to take on Cell at full strength, but was certainly enough to make sure a weakened Cell would stay dead. It just seemed fitting for an actual Earthling to defend the actual Earth. Roshi would telepathically speak to Mr. Popo to bring Dende down to the battlefield and heal Gohan and Trunks. The Z Fighters were back to full strength, with Gohan happy to see Master Roshi once again. And for Trunks, this was the first time he got to meet him. Master Roshi said, I'm sorry, Gohan. I've been a coward ever since the days the Saiyans arrived on this planet. I lived in fear for most of my life, and I hid it through the laughs and jokes. And when the androids showed up, I was truly defeated in myself. I felt so helpless, and I couldn't make a difference. There were times that I wanted to fight, but I was just fooling myself. I was too scared. Gohan puts his hand on Roshi's shoulder. There was nothing to be ashamed about. Everyone lived in fear during that time. The androids were killers, murderers. Roshi began to cry. We lost so many of our friends and family. And you, Gohan, and now Trunks too? You're the bravest men I've ever met. You fought through and saved us all. Your fathers and mothers would be so proud. But Gohan says to Roshi, But Master, you saved us today. Without you, we wouldn't be here. The Earth is rebuilding, and you're the reason why it will continue to grow once again. Because you were a hero today. Trunks enters the conversation and says, This is the first time I've met you, Master Roshi. And it would be an honor to train under you. I'm so rusty. I never want to let my guard down again, even in the times of peace. Will you become my master? Roshi wipes away the tears and begins to smile. If that's how it is, Gohan, don't think you're getting out of this either. Both you boys got some milk runs to do, so chop chop. Training starts in 30 minutes. Gohan and Trunks smile at each other and give each other a fist bump. Times were good. Sure, there was no Goku or Krillin anymore. But seeing Gohan and Trunks together, happy like they were, training, determined, reminded the old master of the good memories in the past. And his goals and motivation now were stronger than ever, to train the next generation of Earth's warriors, teaching them all the tools and skills they would need to add to their own incredible power. The Android Saga would officially come to a close, and ends with joy and a hopeful future. For from there on, Gohan and Trunks would train under Master Roshi and continue getting stronger. Despite many years of peace, they each pushed their Saiyan power even further beyond. Roshi would be so proud. Earth would then grow and rebuild itself to its full potential, and peace would be restored on a permanent basis. They would all protect it. Even in the years to come, with a sudden appearance of Babidi and Dabura, 
they've proved no match against this awesome Saiyan duo. With help and guidance from the Supreme Kai as well, the two would grow even stronger and decimate the evil wizard and the Demon King. No Majin Buu resurrection, as the two were far greater together than in the original timeline when Trunks was alone. From there onwards, the events of Dragon Ball Z would end with the Earth and Universe 7 progressively improving in the mortal level as balance in the universe was restored and life would bloom with no more villains. In this story, Zamasu would never have turned or caused mayhem because there originally were no additional timelines caused by time travel machinery and additionally, no external factors hindering Zamasu's guidance under his master. In their universe, Zamasu would continue a path of good thanks to the training and eventually show more compassion to humans over time. And that's how it would go in my story. Which leads even further into the future. Due to the mortal level improving over the years, Universe 7 would have removed itself off the radar of the hierarchy and as such would not be erased due to the potential the gods saw in the promise and improvement Universe 7 showed. Further adventures into the future we will leave up to your imaginations. But if there was ever another villain to show himself, they better tread carefully because the forces of good will never back down and they will always be training to stop anyone who threatens the Earth and the rest of the universe. Here stands Gohan and Trunks, the sons of Goku and Vegeta, with their hybrid Super Saiyan potential as well as their use of the Potara fusion in times of need, they will never ever be defeated. This story comes to a closure with no twists, no complex ending, the story of Gohan and Trunks working together and fighting together for the rest of time ensured the future of Universe 7, the true timeline, would never be erased. It would turn out even more positive and beautiful than anyone could ever imagine. Despite the wars, despite the hard times, despite the loss, through everyone's sacrifice, it all meant something. It was all channeled through the warriors Gohan and Trunks. The future is now the present, and the present is saved and will always be protected. Thank you Gohan, thank you Trunks, and thank you Master Roshi. I hope you enjoyed this happy ending scholars. Sometimes it's nice to end it on a high note after all the darkness that the good guys suffered. If you enjoyed this story I'd super appreciate a like as it really helps the algorithm and all that and let me know what you would add as well in the story or if you like this story on just how it ends in a simplistic way. Oh, I forgot. What the hell happened to Mr. Satan? Tell me what you think would happen to the other characters in this story who survived. Maybe you could add a comment on how their story would play out. I like the idea of the future, or I should say the original timeline now, getting a really positive ending compared to how it was treated in the Dragon Ball Super anime and manga. The future is bright. And I've got tons of awesome series coming up for you scholars, so do consider sticking around if you want more of this. Be sure to hit the subscribe button and join this adventure with us all. I hope you have a wonderful day. Until we meet again, I'll see you in the next dimension.